DFW Lab Rescue is a nonprofit group that's working to find loving homes for labs. How long have you been doing this? Well, our organization actually um, started out rescuing Labradors from a breeding club um, that was in Dallas, and the, we were finding more and more Labrador retrievers that were in uh, the shelters. Um, so our members of the breeding club were actually rescuing these dogs from the shelters and then using their contacts to adopt them out. So our group has been ex in existence for over 20 years. We've had our nonprofit status um, for 17 years uh, now as a 501c3 organization. So Jennifer, what is the process of accepting a dog into your program and getting them adopted? Well, um, we have volunteers that walk area uh, shelters and look for Labrador retrievers in the shelters that need saving. And once we, you know, evaluate them and make sure that they're fit for adoption, we pull them into our program and get them to one of our um, vets who uh, give them a full exam. We make sure that they are um, heartworm negative and if they're heartworm positive, we treat that. They receive all of their vaccinations. Um, they get sometimes a bath um, and their nails trimmed and um, we microchip all of our dogs so that we can track them if they're ever lost again. Um, once our dogs are cleared um, by the vet, they move into our foster homes, which are all volunteer based. Um, our foster homes provide a loving, um, safe environment for our dogs to um, relax in. And they have to stay in our program about 12 days. And sometimes it can be up to 30 days or more. Um, once they're in their foster home, they are matched with our approved applicants and we want to match the dogs to the homes that they need. And uh, then our foster homes interview um, those applicants and uh, decide which home would be best for them to um, live in for their forever home. Where do a lot of the dogs come from that you see? Um, most of our dogs come from shelters in the DFW Metroplex area. We do have some owner surrenders in our program and it, those are people who have um, can no longer keep their lab. Maybe they've fallen on hard times or have to move or they're an elderly person who needs to move into an assisted living um, facility. And uh, we try and, and take those dogs from their owners rather than the owner having to take them from uh, to the shelter. Jennifer, you have some events coming up to help raise funds for your organization. Yes, yeah, we have two um, of our major fundraisers coming up. The first one is in June. It's June 6th and it's called our Run for Retrievers. It's a 5K run and a one mile fun run. It's a great family uh, friendly event and all uh, leashed and vaccinated dogs are welcome to attend. And it's sponsored by Raising Canes this year again, which is a great organization that gives back um, to the community and Kane uh, was actually a, a yellow lab. Um, the second event that we have is our Sporting Chance Golf Tournament. It's the 21st year for us to hold this fundraising event uh, for our organization. It's held at um, Tour 18 on October 4th. It's an 8 a.m. shotgun start. We have ambassador dogs out on the course and it's a great time for all the golfers and dogs uh, to really get together and support our group and raise a lot of money for our labs. How do the funds that you raise at these events help your organization? Well, um, we are very happy to say that um, 97 cents of every dollar that we raise goes directly to our labs. It um, pays for the, uh, the bedding, the boarding, the, any training that we may need to get them adoptable. And, um, you know, our foster homes and volunteers do the rest. So we have really no overhead. Uh, we don't have a facility. Everything is 100% uh, volunteer based. Um, even our board members uh, volunteer all of their time. Once we get our dogs to the vet, we, you know, we never know what they may need. So although our adoption fee for adult dogs is 275 and any dog under six months is 350, 
We can sometimes spend, you know, an average of $650 to $700 on each dog. You know, if they have um, heartworm treatment or maybe they need um, some expensive surgery, um, we've had dogs who need, um, you know, their ACL replaced, um, abdominal surgery, you know, leg amputations, maybe they've had a bad break while they were um, astray and their, their break didn't heal quite well and we you know we've had to amputate some legs in our in our group and and you know then they spend that time in the foster home recovering uh, from whatever illness that they have before they're made adoptable. What are some things we should expect when adopting a lab? Well a lab is going to have a lot of energy and uh, we want to direct that energy in a positive way so um, we would suggest that you have a crate in your home and have crate training when you're uh, not able to watch the lab. It, it keeps the lab safe and it keeps your home safe. Um, you would want to provide some exercise for the lab um, and some structure and just a very positive uh, environment for them to redirect the energy that they have in a very pleasing uh, way. Jennifer, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having us. If people want to find out more about your organization, where would they go? Uh, we have a website. It's uh, dfwlabrescue.org. We also have a Facebook page if you can follow us on that. And we're on other social media sites like Instagram and Twitter. Well, that's great. We look forward to joining you at the golf tournament. Yes, I hope you'll come out. In the 5K run. Yes, definitely. We'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.